Colorado radio host Brian Fisher for effortlessly breaking down God's economy. So I think you can make a good case that leadership in culture, society, politically, as well as in the home, uh, that that is something in God's economy that's reserved for men. Now, I understand that there are Christians out there who disagree with me. I'm not speaking for anybody uh, but myself. You know, when I've verbalized these things before, I've just gotten blistered. I mean, I know a little bit about what Jeremy's talking about. Is that I just get blistered for saying this anytime it happens. So maybe Jeremy's wondering, what if somebody had the courage, you know, to go on national TV, some somebody of some kind of prominence or visibility, and said, look, I'm going to vote for Trump because he's a man. I don't believe that women should be entrusted with high political office. See what would happen to him. That's the position I happen to take. Nobody's asked me what I think about that. But his question is, what happens if somebody says that? Wisconsin Congressman Glenn Grothman for reassuring us that men will still be able to get all the health care they need should Planned Parenthood disappear. When I look at cities around me that have a Planned Parenthood clinic, usually they're what, I, what by Wisconsin standards are medium-sized cities. 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars. Usually in those cities, as a guy, I could go to many clinics locally that have all the machines that one would need. Uh, all of these clinics, as far as I know, take Medicaid dollars. So they, you know, you could go to any of those clinics to get any medical service you could. I guess what I'm getting at is, in my opinion, if Planned Parenthood disappeared tomorrow in those towns, there would still be three or four or five clinics or hospitals providing all the Medicare, uh, all, all the uh, medical care you would want, um, and, and, and quite frankly, providing superior care to people who are on Medicaid. Um, Oklahoma State Senator Joseph Silk for proposing legislation that would make performing an abortion first-degree murder. And, and at 10 weeks, just at 10 weeks, those kids, they look like babies. They have feet, fingers, toes, everything. If it becomes law, Bill 1118 would allow for no exceptions to abortion, no age-related distinctions, and calls the procedure a homicide. When you take that life, it's classified as first-degree murder. Whoever performs the abortion that intentionally kills uh, that human embryo. But what about when the life of the mother is at stake? It still wouldn't make it legal. The even worst case scenario of a ruptured fallopian tube, there's a procedure that can keep that mother completely fine. And Missouri State Rep Rick Bratton for proposing a bill dubbed the Father Knows Best Act. The, the women's movement uh, for equal rights, well, it's swung so far that, that we've now taken away um, uh, the man's right in, in the say of their child's life. His bill, filed earlier this month, requires a woman to obtain the written, notarized consent of an unborn child's father to get an abortion. You see why some women might see that as, a, as offensive, that they might say, you know, what right does a man have to a decision about a woman's body? Well, it's not a woman's body with an abortion. It's a child's body. It's a child's life that's taken. The woman's life is not altered. Bratton did. 